This is the Cal 101 Podcast on Cape Atlantic Live. Here's your host, Nick Costco. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Cal 101 Podcast right here on Cape Atlantic Live. I'm your host, Nick Costco. We have a very special guest this evening, Mike DeFazio of Ramapo High School. Of course, the undefeated Ramapo football team playing in the state championship for the, the, the uh, New Jersey Group 4 title, I should say. Maybe one day we'll get to we'll get even further to an overall state championship. But for the Group Four state title on Sunday at Rutgers University against the Mainland Regional Mustangs, Coach, thanks for joining me. Appreciate the time as always. To start out, man, just for our South Jersey audience, a little bit about yourself, uh, about your program, you know, the, the basics, as as we say, as uh, you know, Mainland doesn't see Ramapo quite often here in, in New Jersey yeah. high school football. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, Ramapo. Football is uh, it's a storage football program in, in New Jersey. Um, it's had a, quite a few uh, championships here. We have 12 state championships, uh, 13 sectional titles. We had just added one this year. Um, and, you know, had some great coaches here. Uh, prior to me was the late, great Drew Gibbs, um, who un- unfortunately passed away during the 2021 season. Um, he was an absolutely outstanding coach. You know, our uh, in New Jersey, the the, the coach of the year award is named after him. Uh, very appropriate as, you know, he was a guy who not only was a great football coach, but a great person and, and did a lot for the game. I mean, I know when I was a young coach, I, I'd so, seen him in, uh, you know, in clinics and stuff like that at, at Glaciers and just a very influential guy. Um, and it was you know very sad what happened. Um, and he, he made a, an amazing program here. And prior to him, it was Mike Miello, who was also a great coach, went to Rutgers, and that's when uh, Drew took over in a 2000, 2001, I believe. Uh, but it's 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 always been a great program. It's a great community. Uh, you have three towns that pool into one, Franklin Lakes, Oakland, and Wyckoff. And, you know, football is very important there. Their rec programs that we have are outstanding. Um, you, you, know, you have a lot of parents involved with it. Um, but you know, they're, they're very, very knowledgeable coaches. They do a great job and, and our kids come in very well prepared and pretty, pretty polished football players at a young age. So it's, it's a great place. You know, it's a very special place, particularly from an athletic standpoint and especially from a football standpoint. Yeah. Very similar to uh, mainland regional down here in Atlantic County. Of course, they, same thing. They pull from three different towns, Linwood, Summers Point and Northfield for our South Jersey viewing audience. So very similar up there in North Jersey. So I got to say, you guys have one heck of a football program. So down here, we're looking ahead. At, you know, we, we obviously do a lot of mainland coverage, looking ahead to their opponents, mostly down here in South Jersey, sometimes the ones that stretch above uh, county mm-hmm. lines, of course. But looking at your squad this year, your talent on offense, talent on defense, and the guys that are obviously getting D1 looks, whether it's football, sometimes other sports as well. I know you guys have a lot of multi-sport athletes as well. Just a little bit about uh, your team this year. Again, 12-0, and you've been pretty much just as dominant, winning some big games up in North Jersey. A little bit about your squad this year. Yeah, um, I mean, first and foremost, we just have a great team of guys, you know. And, and I've been uh, – this is my 12th or 13th season as a head coach. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been very lucky to have a, a lot of great kids um, and, and great teams as well at my last place. Um but this is it, it's a it's a special group, and I'm sure a lot of people could say that. But I guess I'll just I'll speak from the standpoint of um, these this senior class. Um, you know, when they came in, when they were freshmen, it was COVID, so you know that that wasn't a, a full season, right? Mm-hmm. Um, their sophomore year is when Coach Gibbs passed away, and their junior year was my first year here. Um, given what had happened, you know, it was. Um, yeah, it was a long interview process. I didn't get hired till very late. Didn't didn't have a normal transition process if that's the way you want to call it um you know coming on late didn't uh didn't have a staff together until very late we didn't have a full off season together and it was you know a, a combination of of old things and new things coming in so this is really this senior classes we'll say first when i say real year of high school football in the sense that like there there hasn't been a deterrent or something um and you know it it's they've taken advantage of it. You know, they've done a phenomenal job since we started working out back in December, you know, all the way through the summertime and the workouts. And it's a great group of kids. Um, they, they get along very well together. You know, it's, it's a healthy balance of, you know, being intensely focused, but also making the right jokes at the right time to keep it loose. Um, they have some great traditions of their own. It just as, as a group, 
And yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. And you know, on top of that, on top of them being great kids, there we have some very very talented athletes. We're we're very fortunate. Um, you know, I can get into uh, the kids if you want individually, or I don't know if you want to handle that later. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, of course, we'll dive into the kids individually just in, in a little bit. And it's interesting what you mentioned how this senior class in particular has gone through a roller coaster. You mentioned you mentioned COVID. You mentioned the previous regime, and then obviously when you came in, not traditionally and of course it took a little bit longer than anticipated this was the first year as you said where everything was clicking everything seemed to be quote-unquote normal there were really no hiccups is that what you envision with this team in particular this senior class maybe even in 2022 if you had that normal process or is it say or, or, or were you thinking it had to it had to be built this way essentially um you know I think about that often with that with that group of kids and you know the senior class last year and just a, again a phenomenal group of kids right and and again some very talented players and i and i think if it were not for the type of transition there there would have been some more success and and that's by no means on, on those kids you know mm -hmm. they're they're a great group of kids it was a very difficult situation they were extremely welcoming of me and you know and you know, introducing me to the traditions that they had that were important to them. And I was bringing some things in as well. And just a wonderful group of kids. The parents were great. And I, I do, I have thought about that quite a few times where it's like, man, like if, if, what would it have been if it was a, a more traditional transition of things? Right. Um, but it is what it is. We, we had a, a, a great season together. They're special kids. I, you know, I still keep in touch with them. Saw a lot of them the other day at our uh, championship. It was great to see him coming on the field afterwards. Um, but it, it, it unfortunately was what it was, you know. Um, but I, I will always look back on that group fondly for sure. Absolutely. So before we get into some of your individual standouts on your team, both sides of the football, your last two games, very tight, very competitive. Northern Highlands in that sectional championship. Of course, they made the state championship last year, lost to Millville, who we know down here in South Jersey, and then a very close win at home against uh, Mount Olive in the state semifinals as well. Just give me a little bit of rundown of those last two games and how your team has been able to you know, stay stay together in those, in those close moments and obviously ra rally what needed be. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Northern Highlands is always an intense competition. Um, you know, the, the towns are 15 minutes away. Um, so, you know, you have kids that know each other, right? And, you know, growing up and just, it it's always just very intense. Um, but it's great football. It's great competition. Um, you know, and Northern Highlands is another, not only like phenomenal football program, phenomenal athletics all around, but a phenomenal school. Very, very similar to Ramapo. Like they're, they're high performing institutions on all levels. Um, and their coach there and their whole staff, it's great coaching staff. So, you know, that one, when in the Northern Highlands game, the second one, um, you know, we came out and, and they really had a great game plan against us um, and they executed extremely well. And, you know, we, we, we made some adjustments that brought us back into it on both sides of the ball, particularly on defense. And, you know, we just we we stuck with it. It was one play at a time and, and just just finished the game. Um, and but uh, yeah, that was that was an, an, an intense one right there because um, we we have played each other the last three years in a row in the sectional championship. <laughs> and they, they won the last two. And, you know, we were able to pull this one out. And I'm sure as as long as these teams play each other, it, it's always going to be a battle. So, yeah, very familiar with you. I mean, just looking at your schedule, you beat them on the road by a point uh, back in September. And, of course, a very uh, low, much more low, low scoring game in the sectional finals. That set, the state semifinal against Mount Olive, again, not high scoring like you guys are usually used to, but 24-19 in favor of you guys in front of the home crowd. Again, uh, what about that game? And, uh I, I got I to gotta imagine after getting over the hump of the sectional final, you find yourself mm -hmm. in a state semifinal similar to what uh, Mainland was like this year. You know, you get over a little bit of a hump, and then all of a sudden you're in a, you're in a new spot at this point. It's like, okay, how do you rally those guys for that new uh, environment in the state semifinals? Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I mean, again, this group of kids is one where, like, you don't need to do too much rah rah stuff. You know, like they're right. they're ready to go. They're 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 locked and loaded on game day and very focused. Um, but you know, Mount Olive was a team, you know, cause they're from Morris County, uh, a little bit similar to mainland in the sense that we, we don't overlap too much. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not as easy to get a gauge on, uh, their, their talent and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Cause you know, if, if they're playing against a team, we know it's like, all right, I, I know those kids. Right. Right. Um, but they're very big up front, very physical. Um, you know, they executed the run game extremely well versus us. Uh, passing was not their primary, 
um, kind of similar to, to mainland, you know, they're very heavy run team. Um, but you know, they were very big and very physical up front and they did a nice job there defensively. They, they were in some good positions and they made some great plays on us. They got a lot of good pressure. Um, but you know, our, again, just our, our guys stuck to it. You know, we, we, we sputtered a few times and then we made some big plays when we needed to, uh, in all phases of the game, OD and special teams. And we, we made the big plays when we needed to. And we also played a clean football game. You know, we had one penalty to, I think they had eight um, and some untimely ones on their end. So, you know, that that made a difference for us. But again, just a very well coached team, played hard, played smart and, you know, good kids. As far as your individuals are concerned, I'll start with your quarterback, Landon the Prima. He is unbelievable. And I was just talking to mainland head coach Chuck Smith about his first impressions of your quarterback. And he's like, Yeah, I've seen those numbers. Those are pretty much career numbers if you go, if you go by uh the way we play down here in South Jersey. So I'm looking at him, you know, over three thousand yards, forty two touchdowns, almost fifty total. The kid could do it all. Uh, just a little bit about him, uh that, that the South Jersey crowd should know about how good this kid really is. The dude's a dude. We'll put it that way. <laughs> um, I mean, he's he's a gifted athlete. So he's you know six two between six two six three and 195, 200 pounds, um, and he's got exceptional athleticism and speed. Um, you know, four five forty, eleven flat hundred. Um, you know, the, the kid move for for a kid to be that big and move that well is is very impressive. Um, he's an above average thrower for sure. Um, and the biggest thing with Landon is just his his ability to just keep things even keel. He he doesn't get flustered, you know, he stays very calm in the pocket. And you know, even on the sidelines, he comes off and he, he you know, a bad thing happens, like it's just he, he wipes it off and he moves on to the next play. Uh he's got tremendous football IQ. Um you know, we had a game actually our first game of the year, we were playing Somers the New York State champ and we were down two touchdowns and they we had no timeouts. And they were on our 11 or something. And it was like two minutes left. And Landon just comes over. He's like, let him score. Onsides kick. Get it back. We'll score. We'll score. And that's literally what happened. Like, so <laughs> for like a 17-year-old to have that type of composure, confidence, and, and you know, head about him in, in that moment is, is very impressive. Hence the reason he's a, he's a highly recruited kid. Um, he's a very good student and just a great kid all around. Absolutely. Uh, look at James McGurko, your leading rusher this year. I mean, aside from Landon, of course, who has over 600 yards on the ground, but he's another uh, bulldozer of a running back. And again, I compare him to some of the guys around here like Steven Ordilli or Rocco DiBiase running the football for mainland. Uh, a little bit about James McGurko and just what he brings to the offense as well. I know you guys are more of a, it seems like a heavier passing team, but, but obviously he's he's no slouch running the football either. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, James is definitely more dominant on the defensive side. So when we get to that, we can talk a little bit more, but you know, James is a kid who, who's been a little bit of a Swiss Army knife um, for his entire career because he's gone from quarterback to running back. And then, you know, this year, you know, he splits reps at Q and running back. So he, he's a very talented kid. Um, and he, he's he's kind of just like – he's one of those guys, like, if you wanted to split him out at wide receiver, you could put him out there too, you know. And, again, just another kid who has very, very high football IQ. I mean, we'll – you know, <laughs> we've had situations where – you know, James comes in and he'd be like, hey, coach, he's like, I watched one of their games and the, the huddle film showed their sidelines. I broke down all their signs. And it's like, that's pretty impressive <laughs> for, you know, a teenage kid. Right. Um, and again, just a, a, a very talented, very smart football player who's extremely valuable on both sides. Absolutely. So two more guys on offense that so we'll switch over to defense there. Uh, Brandon DeVal, obviously a very talented pass catcher, as well as uh, Zachary Schnornbush as well. Those two guys putting up huge numbers, how, helping out Landon at quarterback. Uh, what can you say about your receiving core? And just the, the, the ability to basically spread the ball around to, it just yeah. seems like guy after guy after guy. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll start with Zach because Zach is having an incredible season. I mean, what is Zach's got? Uh, 1,200 receiving yards, 18 touchdowns. So he's one of the leaders in the state. Um, you know, he just set the school record for touchdowns in a season for a receiver. Um, and, you know, Zach – Zach is a uh, – it's the best way to describe him. Zach, he's a very smart football player, very tough kid. Um, but, you know, he, he's a kid that's going to gonna push the limit. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, he's going to go in – like, he's going to go in and make the big play, offense or defense, right? Like, it's like if you need a big catch, 
Like you can count on Zach to literally be like staring at the sidelines, like pointing at himself and just being like, now, like, let's do it. You know, like, <laughs> you, it, and like, and he's going to deliver, you know? So like he, 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 when you need a big play made, he's a guy. Um, and he's a great kid. Um, you know, so he, he's been another one that's just been a pleasure. And, and again, like, all these kids, they very, yeah. very well experienced players, very high football IQ. And I mean, that's why all of them are, have substantial college opportunities as well, you know, at, at good schools and good programs. And uh, Brandon DeVaye is a kid. So, you know, Landon and McGurko and Zach all got, you know, pretty substantial playing time as juniors and McGurko mm -hmm. as a sophomore. Uh, but Brandon has been in some positions where he's just been behind some very, very good guys. So this year, he's always been good, but like mm -hmm. this year was really his year. And I mean, you want to talk about a kid who's making the most of it, like just on both sides of the ball again. So mm -hmm. he's going to receive some postseason honors on both sides, you know. So, again, just a testament to how impressive of a player he is. Uh, but he's another guy just like he has made some catches in big moments that are just incredible, you know, like like third down conversions where he's leaping towards the sideline and somehow still gets his toes in, you know, mm -hmm. like he's had a few touchdowns where literally dragging people across the goal line because he's just not going to be denied. And then on the defensive side of the ball, he's he's an exceptionally physical kid. You know, he he attacks with violence in, in good ways. You know what I mean? Like right. he, he's there to get after it. Seems like that tenacity is there with a lot of your guys, especially the guys who are starters on both sides of the football. So over on defense, uh, I had mm -hmm. to point out this kid because I, you know, I again for for an undersized guy, I did play lineman, not very well, of course, back in my high school days. Yeah. But you know, for mainland down here, it's guys like Big Dan DeFeo, they call him. Uh, but for you guys, um, uh, Brendan Latz, I, I looked at him and I'm just like that kid's a force up front. Good luck blocking him. Good luck just trying to get him down to the ground. He's a menace in the backfield, uh, racking up all the tackles this year. Three sacks, nine tackles for loss to go to his name as well. Uh, a little yeah. bit about, about what he brings to the uh, defensive line for you guys. Uh, just uh, speed and intensity. Uh, I mean, Lats, he's he's not a big guy, as, as you said, right? But, I mean, he just finds a way to get it done. And, you know, whatever it is, whether he's just using great technique or using a little bit of his speed, whatever it is, but he gets in there, man, and he makes tackles. He disrupts the backfield. He gets after the quarterback. And, again, just another a phenomenal kid. You know, he's um, uh, he, he's up for a, a naval program. Um, he's a very high-performing student, National Honor Society, um, mm -hmm. as was McGurko as well. Mm -hmm. um, but – yeah, just, a, a, again, a great kid who gets after it on both sides and, you know, has been getting after it. Like, he's been a, a weight room leader for us. Um, believe it or not, for as small as he is, he is an exceptionally strong kid. Um, he's got a 300-plus pound bench. Um, so, he's he, he's no slouch, man. He, he gets after it. That's something I uh, only dreamed of uh, when I during when I played <laughs> played high school, yeah. hitting, hitting that bench over 300 pounds. Uh, one other guy that I had to point out because he – Probably doesn't come off the field, it seems like. Uh, Charlie Wingfield, mm -hmm. he's only a junior. I know he's getting uh, looks already from a Division One colleges. I, I think I saw Syracuse was uh, already offering him as well. He's a great kicker, you know, very good on the extra points, can really boot the football. He's a good he's a good pass catcher, and obviously he's a force on defense as well, flying all, all over to the football. A little bit about Charlie and what he brings to the table for you guys in, in, in all three phases of the game. Yeah, um, Charlie's a unique talent. Um he is going to be the biggest prospect out of Ramapo since Chris Sims, more than likely. Wow. Um, I mean, he's 6'5", 225. And this is also a kid who has never had a full offseason devoted to the weight room because he plays basketball, he plays baseball. He started as a pitcher on the baseball team since he was a freshman. He started on the basketball team last year as a sophomore when they won the state championship. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he didn't start for us last year at tight end was because we had a senior tight end who, who was there and who was very good. Um, but Charlie was our kicker last year as well. And now, you know, he's, he's really grown into it. He's, he's Mr. Everything. Right. And just, again, just an exceptionally talented, unique kid. Um, he's got three offers right now, Boston college, Syracuse and army. Um, he's got an offer from U Penn as well in the Ivy league. And, you know, some more of them are just going to keep coming in because when you have a, a body like that and athleticism like that, and he hasn't hit the weights hard it doesn't mean he, he hasn't it's not that he hasn't lifted right but he's just always in season you know what i mean so right. like that that's that's tough to make substantial gains when you're always playing every day um so again just a, a talented kid uh a wonderful his mom was an outstanding athlete she played basketball at duke um both of his parents actually went to ramapo 
Um, and his dad is the rec director in town, like just like inc incredible story, you know, like they got six kids in the family. All of them are great athletes. Charlie just happens to be the biggest. Um, but yeah, just a, a very talented kid, um, you know, great hands. He's, and he's every week, you know, it's been really great with him um, is like you, you can literally see measurable improvement in him every right. single week, you know? Um, and a, a lot of it, quite frankly, is just a, from a mental standpoint, right. Of just him making a mistake one week and not making it the next, you know? So he's, he's a talented kid. We're, we're very lucky to have him. We're very lucky to have all the guys you brought up. Um, but yeah, a unique kid who's going to have some, um, some high class problems very soon in his life in terms of <laughs> making college decisions. I could easily see that. Ramapo head coach, Mike DeFazio with me here on Cal one-on-one -on -one. coach, a couple more for you before I let you go. Uh, mm -hmm. So when I, when I was talking to coach Smith the other day, I, I know you guys have actually never crossed paths and don't probably don't know too much about each other, but from an outsider's perspective from North Jersey, where it seems like North Jersey is, it's a different animal when it comes to football, especially, you know, I would go back, you know, you go back about 10 years ago, North Jersey, a little bit more crowded. You, it's kind of in its own bubble a little bit. You, you have more of the uh, parochial schools up there as well compared to down here in South Jersey. But from an outsider's perspective, perspective, what do you see uh, from what Coach Smith has built at Mainland and what have you seen basically from South Jersey football in general? Well, speaking specific to Mainland, I see a really good football team. Um, I mean, they they run the hell out of the wing D and they are – they execute extremely well. They're a very disciplined program in every phase of the game. Um, you know, particularly up front, very physical, and they get off the ball very well. Uh, there are three backs between the two wings and the, and the uh, primary fullback. I mean, th those kids fly around. They're not afraid to hit, whether they're running the ball or they're blocking. Their receiver number 16 is an exceptionally talented kid. I know he's a track guy as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, yeah, it's it's a it's a very well-coached team, and the kids have clearly bought into not only the discipline of things, all right, but the toughness of it. You know, to my understanding, and I've obviously read a little bit about the team, you know, they, they do early morning workouts, so there's a, there's a toughness to it. And I remember at my, at my last place, you know, that was our only time to lift. So we were mm -hmm. lifting from January to June, 6 a.m. for six months straight, and the kids took so much pride in that in terms of just being tough and doing something hard. And you can see that in the way that Mainland plays. Um, and defensively, it's the same thing. Like, they fly to the football. They are very aggressive. They're, they're, their backers do a great job keying the guards, all right? They get downhill, and, and they want to hit. Um, and then on special teams, it's it's great execution. You know, they don't make very many mistakes, and you know, it, which is why they're 13-0, and 0, right? You know, like, you don't get to that point by accident. Um, so, and then, you know, Coach Smith also has – two other head coaches on his staff that are his mm -hmm. coordinators or former head coaches. So you have a lot of wisdom and a lot of success and experience in that program there. And so whether they're from South Jersey, Central Jersey, New York, I don't care. That's a very good football team. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a great challenge. I'll leave you here with this one coach. And again, this is only your second year, I believe uh, right here at Ramapo as the head coach, a state title, both for both you and Coach Smith, first time it, it, at this point, it, you know, since New Jersey, you know, this is only the second year that they have gotten this far, which, I mean, frankly, I think it's great for the sport and for the entire yeah. state in general. Absolutely. Both going for your first state title. What does this mean? And I know most coaches, if not all coaches, will say it's about the team, it's about the program, it's about the kids rather than yourself. Just to kind of put it all together, what would this mean for you, for your program, for this town, for this, for this high school that – has this story tradition of winning, but to add this ultimate prize now of a state title, especially at Rutgers University, you know, basically the, the central hub of, I would guess, football in the state. Mm -hmm. What would that mean for Ramapo High School and for yourself as the head coach? I, I, I mean, it would, it would mean a ton, you know, um, you know, to be in this position for the first time, um, doing something that competing for something we've never competed for. Okay. As, as a, uh, an institution, um, and you get you know, the cliche stuff, like you just literally said, right? Like, you know, just for, for these kids. And, and one of the things that, you know, I've talked about with them, excuse me, uh, since day one is like, all I want for them is for us to be our best and not leave anything on the table, right? If that's, if that's undefeated state championship, if that was 10 and one, whatever it was, we just want to make sure that we are not leaving anything on the table, walking away from this with as little regret as possible and, and being our best and learn, and being able to, to play together and finish. Um, so, you know, for the kids, I, I just, all, all I can hope for 
I mean, obviously want to win for sure. Right. But like yes. that, that it's, that it's a positive experience that made them a better person. Right. Cause I think about my playing career when I was a kid and how much my experience playing football in all sports, but especially football and what was taken from that and how that has helped me be successful in all phases of life in terms of just the winning, understanding how to process failure and all those things. And so like, it, it would be great for this group of kids considering everything that they have gone through to be able to finish the season on top that way. And, you know, cause they went through something that nobody else went through. So for them to achieve something else that nobody else has achieved would be a great way for these kids to go out. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident mainland is thinking the exact same thing about it. Right. So. It's going to be one heck of a battle at Rutgers University on Sunday, 2 o'clock. Game will be streamed on NJ.com. Of course, anybody can, can go log on and watch it if you're not going to be there in Piscataway in person. Coach, I really appreciate the time. As always, good luck on Sunday. Looking forward to watching and hopefully what is an epic battle between uh, Ramapo and Mainland. Obviously, made the best team win. And e Either way, regardless of the loss, we're looking forward to the game and uh, looking forward to seeing the stories that are written and the stories that are talked about from both sides of this game uh, come the conclusion of Sunday's football game. Absolutely. Nick, thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here. Absolutely. Head coach Mike DeFazio from Ramapo High School right here on Cal 1-on-1. -on -one.